Today in history, that dude from all the t-shirts. Ernesto R. Guevara de la Serna, also known as Che Guevara, was born in Rosario, Argentina on June 14, 1928. After studying medicine in Buenos Aires, he traveled extensively all around South America. You might know him doing it on a motorcycle. The injustices he witnessed along the way were the catalyst for what he would do with the rest of his life. Guevara was working as a doctor in Mexico City when he met Fidel and Raul Castro. They then apparently decided that they'd head over to Cuba and overthrow Batista, whose rule President John F. Kennedy had described as one of the most bloody and repressive dictatorships in the long history of Latin American repression. And I did consider trying to do a Kennedy accent there, but then I just decided that that would just be embarrassing for me. Anyway, by 1959, Guevara and the Castro brothers formed the triumvirate of the most powerful men in the Cuban Revolution. Guevara's first official assignment was at the infamous prison La Cabana. His job at this prison was essentially overseeing executions between the years 1959 and 1963. During this time, hundreds of prisoners met their deaths under his watch. Cuban human rights activist Armando Valadares, who was arrested in 1960 for protesting communism and spent the next 22 years in prison for this, said of Guevara, he was a man full of hatred. He executed dozens and dozens of people who never once stood trial and were never declared guilty. In his own words, he said the following, at the smallest of doubt, we must execute. And that's what he did at the Sierra Maestra and the prison of Las Cabanas. Valadares went on to state, For me, it meant 8,000 days of hunger, of systematic beatings, of hard labor, of solitary confinement and solitude. 8,000 days of struggling to prove that I was a human being. 8,000 days of proving that my spirit could triumph over exhaustion and pain. 8,000 days of testing my religious convictions, my faith of fighting the hate my atheist jailers were trying to instill in me with each bayonet thrust, fighting so that hate would not flourish in my heart. 8,000 days of struggling so I would not become like them. It was on October the 24th, 1963, that President Kennedy shared his own thoughts on the situation that was going on in Cuba in an interview with a journalist called Jean Daniel. This was later published in the New Republic on December the 14th, 1963. In this interview, he stated, I believe that there is no country in the world, including the African regions, including any and all the countries under colonial domination, where economic colonization, humiliation, and exploitation were worse than in Cuba in part owing to my country's policies during the Batista regime. I believe that we created, built, and manufactured the Castro movement out of whole cloth and without realizing it. I believe that the accumulation of these mistakes has jeopardized all of Latin America. The great aim of the Alliance for Progress is to reverse this unfortunate policy. This is one of the most, if not the most, important problems in American foreign policy. I can assure you that I have understood the Cubans. I approve the proclamation which Fidel Castro made in the Sierra Maestra when he justifiably called for justice and especially yearned to rid Cuba of corruption. I will go even further. To some extent, it is as though Batista was the incarnation of a number of sins on the part of the United States. Now we shall have to pay for those sins. In the matter of the Batista regime, I am in agreement with the first Cuban revolutionaries. That is perfectly clear. With the revolution successful, matters of, you know, running the country then came to the forefront. Despite Guevara lacking any sort of business training whatsoever, he was eventually named finance minister and president of the Cuban National Bank. He actually worked very hard at this post. All other controversies aside, no one could ever accuse Che of being a slacker. And he was actually really popular with the people, but he also kind of unsurprisingly failed to produce any results. Guevara also began to openly question the Soviet Union's commitment to global socialism, especially after Nikita Khrushchev removed nuclear missiles from Cuba during that 1962 missile crisis. So in that era of global revolution, Che Guevara became incredibly famous, even outside of Cuba. But in 1965, he dropped out of sight. And if Castro knew where he was, he wasn't talking. At least not until that October, when Castro admitted Guevara had resigned his posts and left Cuba to fight imperialism in new fields of battle. 
Guevara made his way from the African Congo back to Cuba and finally, on the suggestion of Castro, to Bolivia. At first, he and his group of 120 guerrillas had some initial victories. Then, a US trained battalion of Bolivian Rangers began hunting them down. Bolivia, July 1967, Guevara noted in his diary. The negative aspects prevail, including the failure to make contact with the outside. We are down to 22 men, three of whom are disabled, including myself. Things got even worse by September when Guevara's lifelong asthma flared up and he was also suffering from dysentery. The Bolivian Rangers were closing in as well, and on October 8, 1967, the Rangers they got their man. He was executed the next day and his body photographed on a stone slab, with the photographic evidence being published worldwide to erase any doubt whatsoever. So many years after his death, Che Guevara's role in history is still hotly debated, as are the many seemingly contradictory aspects of his life, such as being a rebellious young man who would state in 1961 that youth must refrain from ungrateful questioning of government mandates. Instead, they must dedicate themselves to study, work, and military service. So, whatever one's opinion on the man, one thing is for certain. Thanks to Alberto Corda's photograph of Guevara, taken in March of 1960, seen on everything from posters to coffee cups, even today, he is certainly one of the most recognizable figures of the 20th century. So that's another Today in History, a new series here at Today I Found Out. Do remember this is in addition to our regular video today, so check that out as well. And if you did like this one, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, well, give it a thumbs down. I don't mind. And leave us a comment to let us know what you think. I would like that. Let us know how we're doing, how you like this new series. Whether you'd like us to continue, we don't really know. That's what comments are for. And for now, though, I'll see you in the next one.